just uh, five years ago, uh, a lot of project was so significant to show the powerful of the architecture, the economy and all of that. Today we need to forget all of that ideas and relate with our environment. I'm Jose Juan Pere and I founded the company in, in 86, that means 34 years ago. That is my office, I go there, it's in the ground floor of a big uh, house and that it was a, a fabric warehouse in Barcelona. My name is Antonio Puig. I'm one of the founders, partners of uh, GCA Architects, and we're a company that works in a lot of the places in the world, from Canada to China, Africa, and Europe, of course, in Spain and Barcelona. We are uh, around 100 people, professionals, led by six partners, architects, and we have also four associates. Here is a place that we work in is our studio. I studied architecture in the University of Barcelona. I found with Jose Joan Pere in 1986 uh, GCA Architects. And many people ask us why we said we put GCA as a, as a architectural studio instead to put our name. That means anything. If you say GAC, people will say GAC. If you say, you no, know, the combination. It was in a, in a trip, in a car, and we start saying names, and uh, finally we choose this one. I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the one that we choose at that time. It happened 34, almost 34 years ago, so still <laughs> alive. After the studies, I started to work in a, in a in a studio of architects with, uh, for another architect and I find a friend of mine uh, who is my partner today. In that time Barcelona was elected uh, Olympic uh, city and in that moment we thought can be the best moment to open or to start an uh, architectural company. And that's why what we did, I think uh, we, we was very, very young at that time. And the biggest advantage is we, we were not serious, we didn't know what we did. And that's why we have that company today. But we were young, inconscient, and a little crazy, but uh, we said we have, we can do it. Why not? If other people is able to do it, why we are not going to be able to do it? In in our mind, in the beginning, the idea was to do an international company. That was so clear, a company with partners and a team of design. It was not a personal idea of to open a studio, and the the way of the studio is like our life to do something for the next generation. And we relate with a lot of foreign people, a lot of uh, foreign architects also. And we discovered what was our romantic idea was something possible. And for instance, we, we went to New York because we had a, an artist friend from Barcelona, an sculptor, and in a dinner he present us uh, uh, the, the, the president of a, an important uh, Chicago architectural office, Bruce Graham, uh, from SOM, that will open to the wall uh, with, with, an, with a design and a work in that, in that city. And that was our, our start. Probably what they changed uh, 
the company from a local company to an international company was that we had the opportunity to build the hotel arts with uh, Skidmore Laguna Merrill, it's a SOM. And it was a huge tower, 42 floors, 150 meters height, and was something incredible to us. But at the same time, we, we saw what was the way to do a big office and to organize with the different teams and the different uh, specialized uh, a, a big studio of architecture. And that made to us the idea that can be possible. We learned the way to be a team instead to be a person. So probably the big change of our company was uh, this collaboration with uh, Skidmore for the hotel arts. They construct uh, a new harbour, the Olympic harbour. In that uh, way, they make two towers in the urbanist design to make like a brand or a signal uh, of the new area. And we had the opportunity to design with the Skidmore one of these towers. And that was the hotel. And at the same time, the opportunity was the managing of the hotel came from an American uh, company was Rich Carlton Company. We started with the project around 89. That means three years. We have three years to build a 42 stories building from the project. So we have to do the project and then the construction. That in three years is almost impossible at that time. So the technology that we used at that time was uh, very uh, advanced for the time. It was so complex in the beginning to relate the city of Barcelona with a tower. It wasn't just a person, it wasn't a tower there. The, the, the medium, uh, the average of the height was seven floors. Uh, we only had a, a monument uh, so high, it was the Sagrada Familia, uh, everybody knows. All the area was a new area, the press area. All factories were located at that area. So they put the Olympic Village there, and then the two iconic buildings were the office building and the hotel building, which is the Hotel Arts. We, we work with a steel structure uh, for, for, two different, uh, for two different ways. One of them is speed, was so important to construct so, so fast the building. And the second one was, in our tradition, we, has, uh, we had uh, an important experience about beams and that in steel. With the idea even, why now we show that structure outside. So you have the building, but the structure is, a, is the core, with elevators and uh, stairs, and the structure is outside. <laughs> Trying to be international, that was our idea. We relate also with Frank Gehry and we invite to do a special sculpture in front of the hotel uh, to make us the same. From far away, the signal was the tower and when we was close to that area and in front of the sea, to make us some special sculpture. Uh, and Frank Gehry to us was the, the, the architect from, for the sculpture and they had a, a, a nice fish in Japan, and we saw that and that, and we flew to Los Angeles and visited him, and convinced to come to Barcelona and do that uh, nice, nice sculpture in, in front of the beach. And that made for the hotel and for that property as uh, some symbol, even when you are in the sea and the beach and all that, we, we have the symbol of the hotel through that fish. It was, a, it was a, a really fantastic time to us to relate with all the people, to take all of that foreign culture and a lot of different point of view and ideas about architecture. That relationship to us 
open our mind and make, I think, I think, make possible what we do today and what office we have today. Hola, pues yo soy Emilio, soy arquitecto asociado de GCA. Llevo ya 16 años en la empresa y vamos a comentar uno de los proyectos que hicimos en Paso de Gracia, eh, que son unas viviendas de lujo. Soy José Riu, eh, arquitecto socio de GCA. Llevo 31 años en la empresa y soy socio desde el año 93. Eh, Paseo de Gracia eh, es un eje sería el equivalente a los campos elíseos de París, que une lo que sería el, la ciudad antigua con un barrio que sería el de Gracia y está situado en medio de lo que sería el ensanche de Barcelona. Tengamos en cuenta que en Paseo de Gracia encontramos eh, piezas muy importantes del modernismo, como sería la Casa Milá, la Casa Bayó, obras de Domènech y Montané, como sería Casa Fusté, eh, Casa de Mellé de Puchica da Falc, o sea que es un poco un eje que está rodeado de piezas de primer orden del modernismo catalán. De hecho es uno de los ejes principales de, de Barcelona y una de las calles más famosas de la ciudad. Dentro de ese ambiente, que es una, una, eh, una trama muy, muy rígida, eh, nosotros mismos hemos tenido varios casos de proyectos que hemos tenido que rehabilitar esos edificios. Eso nos obliga a mantener fachadas y a hacer, en muchos casos, que una arquitectura moderna conviva con una arquitectura antigua. Nuestro edificio antiguo venía montado por un edificio completamente moderno y que podían tener lenguajes que fuesen similares o lenguajes que fuesen completamente diferentes. Muy interesante el utilizar un material como es el cobre, que nos da una lectura con el paso de los años diferente y que nos permite diferentes eh, puntos de vista y no es un material plano, sino que es un material que nos da una cierta eh, textura dentro de lo que es el edificio. Para, para enfatizar esta idea de, de un lenguaje nuevo en lo que sería la remonta, la remonta que aparece en Paseo de Gracia es, baja por el pasaje y ocupa esta primera parte, con lo cual digamos, envuelve todo lo que sería la máscara de la fachada antigua. Habiendo cierto respeto por el edificio antiguo, eh, la arquitectura moderna eh, asomase y diese una, eh, una apariencia de que estaba presente dentro de lo que es el edificio. Lo que no queríamos era ni imitar ni hacer algo completamente diferente, sino que de alguna manera intentar convivir esas dos arquitecturas. Yo, yo creo que el cambio de lenguaje lo que hace es poner en valor la arquitectura antigua respecto a la, a la, en la intervención. Un diálogo de, de, y eh, un poco, bueno, es, es lo mismo que hizo con, con otros lenguajes y otra arquitectura, el otro lado del pasaje. ¿no? Our idea is, it's, what is important is the teamwork. I think the Renaissance time is finished, and today what makes a really a, a big difference is to be a, a big team of experts. I think that now, if you see not only architects, you see engineers, you see doctors, you see lawyers, all the professions that time ago were a person uh, doing a profession, now you see teams doing the same job. Why? Because more, more uh, information, more views, more capacities make uh, something better. We relate with the different uh, interesting people, with the even, and they approach to a project their ideas. And to, to mix all of that, that, that takes the best for every project. And I think that it's the future. And at the same time, the society, all, all of our world, is more complex than 100 years ago. And that means it's time for the team. Welcome to GCA Architects. I am Luis Guillem, associate architect of the firm. 
We think that the most important part of the company is always people. So we, have, we are organized in several departments, among which we have accounting, 3D visuals, project management, technicians. But the core of the office is uh, 10 groups of people, which most of us are designers or architects. Lead each of them, but one partner or associate architect. Um, we do believe that people is the key part of the office. So, no matter people has 10 years or 20 years experience, or they are people who just finished the university studies. And so, this mixture of of senior people and young, new, fresh ideas is what we think generates a good value in order to develop our design. I am John Ferre. I am an architect. I am a director of projects here in GCA. GCA Architects is it's such a good firm. So when you are an architect and you you appreciate a lot the designs and the and the luxury buildings that they made, so. It's one of the best firms you want to work for them. No? We also try to translate that not just in the office but also outside. So we organize like competition sports and some events during the year that um, to create these synergies not just in the work in the office inside but also to bring it outside and also create this better network. <laughs> I'm Joanne, I'm 27 years old and I've been working here for almost two years as an architect. What I most like of working here is that there's a really good atmosphere between our colleagues and we do like a lot of activities out of work. Hello, my name is Sofia and uh, I'm currently working in both architecture and interior design. When I entered three years ago, a few people started going to the gym uh, at midday. Every day from Monday through Thursday, we usually go to the gym, yeah. And there's like, I would say maybe 50% of the, of the office going. It's not a must, but the days that you don't go, you actually miss it. Everything move, everything move. And not only in architectural point of view and society probably, also medicine, uh, media, uh, a lot, a lot of things uh, uh, change in the city and, and in our society. And that is, if you don't receive all of that people and you share with them uh, a new ideas, you live isolated in your, in your thinking. My name is Camila and I'm a part of the communications department of GGA Architect. Basically, um, when a company starts growing and starts becoming actually international, and you have to have a department that's actually focused on telling your story and getting your story right and to the right people. Mass media, but it's a mass of media. You know, we have a lot of different medias and you have to be able to choose the right ones to get to the people that you want to get with the right message. And that is the science, basically, and that's why we're here. Having a communications department is more unusual than usual, so it's not normal, I think, especially in architecture companies. Um, but I think it's definitely the future. I think being able to communicate what you do, especially in architecture, it could be very important for the future of the company and especially through time. I love my everyday job. It's, every day is new. It's amazing that every day is just, it's a surprise. We have been working for more than 30 years and we've been working in more than 30 countries, like of course in Spain and Europe, but also in Canada, West Africa, and also in China. My name is Jordi Castanier. I'm an architect from GCA. Um, I'm a partner uh, from, uh, from the year 2000. And I'm in charge of different projects, most of them uh, international projects. Hi, my name is Andrea Navarro. I'm architect from the Polytechnic School of Barcelona and Lausanne. I'm associate architect here in GCA since last year and I'm in charge of all the design approach of all the projects um, in the architecture and interior design area. 
we uh, love to work uh, abroad, to, to work uh, uh, internationally. We love this challenge and we think it's a big potential for us. People, uh, people from abroad understand that uh, our culture, the Spanish culture, which is a mix of different uh, cultures. In Canada, we are working in, in the tower, in the 33 stories uh, tower complex. Um, it's a challenge as all the projects, because at the end you need to have this approach to a different culture to bring the interpretation or, or the feeling that you, that you perceive of, of their customs, the needs that they may have, create a um, new experience. We learn a lot from, from different culture and it's so so nice and so funny to 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 do this analysis of uh, of their different culture at the end you try to summarize the way you approach to a project and we are like um, discovering that we always do three kind of paths of approach the, the social the historical and the physical approach um, in Canada, the client came with an idea of a project with a use that we have um, mixed it and in a way we have dar la vuelta um, and we have created a, a kind of a new product that it works but through the design we, we are bringing new experience to that area. And in fact, in GCA, almost 50% of the projects are coming from different areas of the world. Well, we spend a lot of time uh, traveling and, and we love that. Yeah, that, and, and really... it's nice also because um, when, when we sometimes teach in different universities, they always say that teaching is inspiring. No? And I think that working abroad is, is inspiring a lot. How they live the outside in Canada, for example, we thought that we were completely expertise people because we are Mediterranean, we live the outside as as no one, so, but we arrived there, there and we have discovered like new ways to live. When you work locally in your culture, you have a lot of assumptions, I don't know if it's called like um, prejuicios, prejudgments of, of the best way to live is the way I live. Probably is it, it, the lack of, of knowledge when you are abroad, it allows you to, to to go further, to, to try to discuss with the client and have a more open mind. We, we, we are, in, in, in fact, designing uh, uh, luxury villas in Morocco. And I had a brilliant idea, because they had, uh, these villas are in front, first, first range of, in front of the, of the Mediterranean. A very beautiful, perfect location. And I had uh, a, a nice idea. I thought, okay, let's put the bathroom facing the sea, so while you have bathing the, having a, a bath, watching the Mediterranean, what's a brilliant idea. So I did this presentation to the client, and the client said, are you crazy? That's impossible. So Moroccan culture cannot accept that. The, the sense of privacy for them is so important that this, we see that as a, as a wonderful uh, idea, and they see that as a crazy idea. So I think it's, it's the approach that you have in life and in work and everything is try to find the challenge as a learning situation and how you, how you try to learn from this, each difficulty and, and it's, the, it's an attitude. The name of the project is, is in an office building, it's, it's called Platinum BZN. Okay, and to understand what is happening with the project, what is the beginning of the project, you have to understand what is the beginning of this, this area, this neighborhood of the city. This area, which is called uh, 22 At, okay, is, is located from one harbor and the other harbor, the new one of the city. This is a new, new, completely area developing around the, the city. This area was, at the beginning, factories and industrial area. Well, I'm Juan Velasco. Uh, I'm one of the uh, associate architects of GCA, and I'm in charge of the Department of Systems and Technologies. Uh, well, this is a working model of the Barcelona Lead Platinum building. 
And well, this, this complex is composed by three volumes. The two volumes on the sides have the same height as the pre-existing building. So the starting point here is the urban integration. And the remaining density is condensed in this central tower, which is right in the center of the plot and uh, rises up to 10 floors. These are not three separate buildings, this is a complex, so we wanted to, to, to make this clear by creating a plinth of two stories, it's ground floor and first floor, and also to, to reinforce this, this sensation of unity, we create a facade that, that envelops the building and encloses the whole complex. We wanted to make a gesture towards the, this technological district, which is 22 at. So in the, in the design of the facade, you can see, you can actually see uh, like the shape of, uh, of the symbol of the modern technology, which is a, a chipset, this printed circuit. And actually the shape is it's like that, no? with, with a second skin made of aluminum slats. And uh, well, sustainability was also one of the key points for the project. So in the rooftop of, the, of this plinth and on the building, we set some green areas to help us reduce the heat island effect. Platinum BZN building for our offices. It means that they want to, to get the lead platinum, okay? But the lead platinum, if it's possible, the highest score in the, as a lead platinum uh, around the world. And at the end, Ness is working, is running this, this building, uh, we have got. Then it's so, so interesting for us because it's a good experience for us how to integrate the technology and the tradition inside the, the building, which is the, the, the idea of, the, of this area. And it's the idea of a new generation of buildings around the, the world from our company. You know, that's why it represented this, this building, the future of our company, perhaps. But also, we wanted to make this workplace a better place to work. Uh, that is to say, designing the workplace of tomorrow by thinking out of the box. And, well, yes, yeah, somehow it represents the path we want to follow in the near future. Perhaps in the next future, or in a medium future, the building will create their own energy. They won't need the energy for the central heating or the other, because of the solar panels and, and other things. And concept for a passive house, which is rejecting the, the sun, for instance, in the Mediterranean, so, so interesting that, that point, because you, you have to, to attack before arriving the heat to the building, you are rejecting. It's time for a new generation. Okay, we funded 34 years ago with our help, but it's time for the next generation. That is one horizon, one way. And the second, I think, the architecture will change a lot in a few times, in a very short times. Just uh, five years ago, uh, a lot of project was so significant, it was uh, a big tower, a big, uh, a lot of nice buildings, but to show the powerful of the architecture, the economy and all of that. Today we need to forget all of that ideas and relate with our environment. That, that is the future of the architecture. And it's so close with our Mediterranean culture. If we, if we review our history from the Romans, the Greeks and that, all of that house was, uh, <coughs> was related with the, with the environment and they take advantage of the wind, the sun, the water. All the Mediterranean mix a lot of opportunities to see and to take like an example and change it today. And that is the new way for the architect to do a logical and a project related with the environment and with a good efficiency. We need to, it's time to change. <laughs>